So welcome to this brief presentation on EdgeCam Freeware. Freeware routine has been updated for EdgeCam 2011 R1. Uh, the uh, routine itself, the install routine has been updated as you'll see very shortly and a number of new items have been added to the to the freeware menu. Um, again we need to begin by stressing the freeware is not supported by service teams. Freeware is just simply an amal amalgamation of everyday macros or PCIs, useful items that uh, users and indeed application engineers um, will use during the during a normal working day to help them save time in pr in producing either CAD or CAM functions. First thing I'd like to point out is the is the freeware launcher. Um, as we can see here, definitely does say unsupported, and this will just simply allow the user now to um, read the standard text, agree, and then obviously click OK and install all these items. What will actually happen is that the config file, freeware.config, is added to the ge to the generic profile in support folder, and um, several folders are added to the PCI folder. Um, and what simply happens is that the configuration calls upon or launches the PCI file from from the um, from the PCI folder. Um, in this particular instance, I have already installed Freeware, so I'll just cancel my installation. Once it's installed, what you'll notice on the user's desktop is this EdgeCam launch command. This is a, a very nice facility that first of all detects which versions are actually running on the system. And then rather than having to move through several menus as we had to do in the past, we can just simply say, well, launch the EdgeCam part modeler, launch the EdgeCam code wizard. It's all in one screen rather than having to click back and go for another item in the program group. So in this case, I'll, I'll launch EdgeCam. And this will, of course, it says on the bottom, launch EdgeCam 2011 R1, which is our latest release as of today. What we'll notice is that there's a, a new freeware configuration profile. And this profile simply delivers the freeware commands. So of course what simply happened is rather than having to a user to inconveniently have to go to run command file, browse and find the file, it's now simply and neatly added in this manner here. And of course it's just under the configuration area. So here are all these files. They've been simply bundled up into the freeware area. If we look at the, um, the document area, we've adopted using the uh, the user area. Here we can see all the PCIs now are stored in this particular area. If we go into any of these particular files, you'll find the PCI file. And in certain cases, there's obviously going to be a number of um, solid models. So just to demonstrate that fact to you, if we go to so if you go to freeware, you'll notice we get the the menu-driven icons or style drop-down options. We get a freeware preferences turn off on the message. So obviously, with the message off, the user will be continually asked to accept that they are running freeware. This is the PCD array. We'll um, put some data in here. Of course, we get a PCD. If we turn off the message and then just simply re repeat that milling PCD of holes, you'll now just notice that we don't get the message anymore. Another item that's new to freeware is to insert a single clamp, four inch clamp orientated, say, at 90 degrees. And I'll just place this down here and insert further clamp 90 degrees, 270 degrees and let's place it there. And what you'll notice is that it's not only inserting the clamps but it's also doing the fixture command for us as well. So that's a, a new item in freeware on this particular occasion. Um, there are some other items that we've added in here. If I just very quickly draw a rectangle nice and simple and we go for milling again we can insert a solid vise we've got several types of vices like a triag vise so let's say a small vise uh, orientated along the x-axis it will just simply ask me for two digitizers these are the positions of the devices you'll notice it'll 
move across and insert vices for us, just do an undo. And again, if we just re repeat that command, inserting vices, do a parallel vice along the y axis. Again, it just wants our two prompts. We get to we get the vice again inserted as you can see, and of course the the fixtures are also offset up. Uh, the fixtures are also declared, and also we have a location um, CPL created. This is uh, along the bottom. So when you go into manufacturing, you can marry that particular CPL to the machine datum. Okay, let's just clear that part, and uh, we'll just bring in some example parts to to demonstrate on. So this is uh, obviously a standard solid model in milling. Uh, so in the milling area, very clever little PCI that automatically creates the stock, allows the user to add extra data to the stock or extra size to the stock as we can see here. So it's detected the sizes of the stock. It asks us does it want to create the matching CPL, mating CPL, that's for machine simulator purposes, and then at the same time create a um, CPL. So you'll now see that we've got a new CPL created that the user could now deploy. We'd also got a verify command uh, where we can measure angles on a solid. So between this face and this face, we get a certain amount of angle reports here in the in the feedback menu. There's also uh, a new one for verify um, between the CPL. So between which particular CPL? It'll give us a angle measurement between the CPL that's current and the CPL that's expressed in, in the um, in the drop-down menu. Okay, let's just clear that. There's a couple of uh, extra new ones added in here. These are PDIs um, under the creation area. Create a spiral, so we just um, add in our values, state position of a spiral flat, or again creating geometry, creating a helix. Again, add values. This creates us a 3D helix, as you can see here. Okay, let's just clear that a moment. Um, got some old favourites are in here still. The list nodes and the profile is always a, a particular favourite if a customer wants to quickly understand the um, XYZ data coordinates on a on a component part, create nodes and a profile. So you just simply chain the wireframe profile, state what size you want the um, text to be. This text is actually the text as you can see now. Um, and what Edgecam will also do out, out on its desktop is create a CSV file. Once the file is uh, created and saved, so I need to, need to save this file, let's just call it test. Save that. And if I just quickly undo and re rerun that procedure once more, we'll get a CSV file, create nodes and a profile, chain, and OK. And if I now look at my desktop, what you'll notice that you've got a file the same name as the PPF file. And this particular file is just simply reporting the uh, the nodes on that profile. It can be printed, given to a setter operator where they can very quickly create um, an offline program, an MDI, through the machine tool. number of turning um, items have also been included with respect to creating stock. So we create uh, a stock ring, it'll just simply invite us to type in coordinates. That in this case draws a rectangle behind the uh, behind the scenes a rectangle is drawn to the dimensions typed in by the user and then the stock command is just simply chaining the, the rectangle and there we have our then we have our stock shape. Uh, we've also got um, similar to the milling nominal stock command we've still got the turning nominal stock command so we look at turning, create nominal stock, digitize off the solid. It picks up off the, the dimensions off that solid. So a user now can say, well, I don't buy stock at 360 millimeters. I buy it at 380. So they can overtype those values. 150, say, for the overall. And now, as you can see, you get stock being created for that particular shape. So a very, very quick and easy win in that particular instance. Turn our attention to uh, milling. Uh, we've got still got the trochoidal slot milling routine and zigzag slot milling routine. 
Um, this just simply searches out. It will work on wireframe and on solid. I'll do a wireframe example. So you just obviously again need to populate the dialog area and it will just simply ask me for a start position and a stop position. So it will only work um, um, on two points and two points start here, stop there. And all this simply doing is creating rapid moves and feed moves according to the according to the dimensions that have been received by the command modifier. And there's also a new item inside FreeWiff to hide and show rapid moves. So show my rapid moves and hide away those rapid moves. Sometimes it can be convenient when you're working on very large parts. Um, the favorite item was to edit tool position, so maybe not uh, applicable in this particular case, but if you've got a long running job with many, many different tool numbers, you wanted to quickly change it, then this would pick up every single tool position and allow the user now to, to change it over. To generate code, if you were testing a part like this and maybe you've got a, a CGD file on test, rather than having to move out to the editor each time, another favourite is to read the, the feedback in the NC in the, the NC program in the feedback window. As you can see down here, if we just clear that again and run the file. So we're continually getting the NC program into the feedback window. It's very, very um, advantageous to have something like that if you're doing, um, as I said before, um, some program prove out. Okay, so we'll just finish off with a couple of um, design, design freeware commands. Uh, break an arc. So here we have an arc. Obviously, it's a whole item at the moment. I can ask EdgeCam to take this arc and break it into many into many um, entities, regardless of the plane. So, on this very very plain example, obviously here I now have many many line entities as opposed to one arc entity. But to maybe give you a, a kind of a better practical example of that, we could be creating some geometry from this solid model. So. If I say create geometry from solid model, which in itself isn't um, isn't a, a difficult task, so here we have the geometry. What I want to do with that geometry is eventually <clears throat> make it into a continuous. Purposes I might want to maybe do a a surface on it, or I want to put a toolpath on it. So if I want to make a continuous out of something like that, we're going to run into trouble. You can see it breaks the continuouses or the arcs are broken into the top CPL. I want it to remain in the current CPL. So if I ask the freeware command to break any arc, I'll take this item first into, yeah that's good enough, 0.001, then we'll do this one, and then we'll do this one, and then the last one. Okay, let's now, um, if I show you the show you the actual um, item, because it's just going to explode it onto the, onto the solid CPL. There we go. So now it's actually broken the arcs as line entities. Obviously so it's adopting the solid layer. So now I have the opportunity to create that continuous chain away without a problem. And of course now I've got a continuous that allows me to work with that continuous in any way, shape or form. This last part being a um, this last part being a solid model normally we'll find that EdgeCam will automatically, unless you've turned it off inside the preferences area, will automatically bring in the CPLs. Sometimes it's a bit of annoying to get rid of those CPLs because EdgeCam at this moment in time will only to individually delete the CPLs. So again under the freeware menu you'll notice that we have a delete multiple CPLs. So it picks up which CPLs are, are currently in this particular part. Control key, select, OK. And what we'll find is that those CPLs have now come away from this particular uh, from this particular part, uh, having the inconvenience of having to do individual selections. Okay, so there we have the the freeware commands. Uh, I hope you um, use them and practice them and get great benefit from them during your time working with EdgeCam. Of course, if you've got any feedback, then um, please um, let me know. Um, do remember that freeware is not supported, so this isn't part of your service contracts. It's something above and beyond. It's something extra. Um, but if we can make small amendments, we we will do. Okay, thank you for your time today.